Good morning, dear Stitchers. It's Judy Whitman with JBW Designs. This is floss tube number 49, which is hard to believe. I think I'm almost at my two year anniversary for doing these. And I started thinking about this this morning, asking myself, why, why do I do them? And I think that's, <laughs> I guess it's kind of a, a statement of purpose here, but I think what I love about it is that I get a chance to communicate with stitchers from all over the world and I love reading your comments, um, I love reading your emails. It's just, it just brings me joy in a, in a strange way because I'm sure people wonder why, you know, why do you bother? But it's just, it's just a communication thing. I'm, I'm talking to people who love to do what I love to do. So I guess that's the reason I'm here. Um, I'm here up in my office. I'm surrounded by all kinds of models. And my theme for today is actually uh, two parts. One, I want to finish Sampler September. So I have more samplers in my collection to show you. Some that have been published, some that have not, and some that I've designed myself. And then the other kind of disparate part of this, oh, I'm sorry for that. I'm gonna have to, let's see if I can fix something here. I forgot, I forgot to do one step, which was turn off my mail, and so I'm getting notifications. Um, so the other part of the video is going to be uh, fall and Halloween design. So you can see they're very disparate topics, but um, I'll tell you why I'm doing both in one day a little bit later in the video. So the first thing I want to address is some of the comments that came up in the last video. And um, I always read them, of course, and take them to heart. And one of them, one of the gals said, uh, your voice is very soft and I'm having trouble hearing you. So I tried to make an adjustment on my computer today to turn up the volume and we'll have to hope that that works. I know that I have a very soft voice and sometimes my voice kind of just, I don't know, it kind of, it goes to a whisper, I'm not sure why. But <clears throat> anyhow, um, so I'm trying to address that. And then the other topic that came up was ads. And this is something that I did not want in my videos. Um, I know they're very disruptive. So when I go to post this video, I'll see, make sure that I have hopefully the right settings to eliminate the ads. I might not know what I'm doing, which, which sometimes happens, right? So um, let's see, my next topic has to do with products that I found at my usual source, Hobby Lobby. And I always like to kind of inspire you, not only with the things that I've designed, my collection, but also things that I find that would be good for finishing. So the first one that I want to show you is interesting to me because um, Hobby Lobby doesn't always repeat the products that they carry each season, but in this case, they've actually had this, I think, now for three years. So I was on the hunt for it. I'll show you what it is. It's a wooden, well, I don't know. It's, it's kind of a composite, actually, metal uh, stand that says Joy that I love because you can put it on a shelf. And I used this two years ago with my uh, Christmas in the Round design. And it was mounted right in the center of the O. And I sent this, actually, I'm going to set this down for a second. I sent this down to, um, uh, for a trunk show uh, a couple months ago. And this piece actually cracked in the trunk show. It must be that I had not packed it well, but the whole thing broke. And so I had to kind of pry this piece which was the original piece that was on the broken joy sign. You can see the back of it off of that old one. And I'm going to re-glue it in the center of this one. And the reason that I put a pretty backing fabric on it is actually you can see uh, in the back, the back of, the, of your design. So it just seemed like it needed to be covered. Um, there are a couple other designs. Let me show you the book that goes with that. So Christmas in the Round looked like this. I don't know if they still carry these plaques. I'll have to do a search again. And then there are a couple of other designs that would fit in that center. 
the alphabet in the round would look really nice there. And I also think my new design around France would look great in the center of this. And incidentally, that piece that I showed you was stitched on a 32 count over two threads. So that is the size that you would need to work it on to have it fit correctly. So that was one product to show you. Let me set that aside. And then I found a few others, and I know my family always gets a kick out of my very low-tech um, productions here. But I like showing you things that I think, okay, these gals or men might have use for them. So you know that I have a whole series of what I call the Christmas tree collection. I think there are 11 books in this collection. So, you know, each of the 11 books has two designs in it. However, many of these uh, trees I have used in my ornament collection booklets, which if you haven't seen me before, I have four separate spiral bound books with, and each one has 20 ornaments in the booklet and they're great for stitching, for gifts, etc. So um, if you don't want to, I don't know that all of the designs from these 11 books, no they're not, I know that, are in those four collection booklets, but all right, let me keep talking and show you the product that I saw. So I hope you can see this. So I spotted these little wooden trees and I thought, oh, I love that shape. It might work. I haven't found that before. They could be painted. They could be spray painted, red, white, a dark green, etc. And I think that some of these trees would fit beautifully into that little tree shape. So any of the products that I show you, I'm going to put the product number in uh, my notes below the video when I'm finished here. And then the other product that I found that I um, have shown in other designs, let's see, do, yes, here it is. Okay, so I think I've used it twice. Let me double check here. Sorry about that. Yes, all right. So I found I found the sources. Bear with me, right? So this is a little wooden wreath tree. And it actually, in my store, um, let's see, I'm trying to think where to tell you. There's a whole series of racks with Christmas products on it. There's ribbons, there's um, wooden pieces to paint. And I think that that falls, that these fall into that category because I've used these little wreaths twice. And so I want to show you how I used those. I used those in alphabet in the round. Now these were stitched over one because that wreath is fairly small, but they do make a larger wreath where you could do the over two design. And I also used it for a Christmas ornament for my Around France design. So, and there are other round designs, of course, that would fit on the wreath. Um, there actually might even be some ornaments in my ornament collection. So I wanted to show you those products. I'll give you the numbers below. So now I'm moving on. Oh, no, I'm gonna backtrack. <laughs> I do that a lot, don't I? So I often have a contest um, on my Friends of JBW Designs Facebook page. And oh, I'm not I'm not um, as probably as regular as you'd like me to be on posting the contest. It's kind of when I have time. So what I do is I post three different designs, and I ask my um, members, and you can just go onto that page and say I want to join. You don't. There are questions you don't have to answer the questions, but it's a fun way to interact with some of the designs and for you to vote on your favorites. So this week, I thought I had a brilliant idea. Uh, some, some might say, hmm, maybe not. But in honor of Queen Elizabeth, um, and I don't know about you, but I was just enchanted with the whole pageantry of her um, service the other day, I decided to do two, three pieces that kind of related to her and to England. So these were the three designs that I posted on that contest. I did my Ode to Britain design, which really falls into a sampler category with all the um, motifs that would 
the Tower Bridge and Big Ben and teapots and ships and a crest, uh, the little red buses, umbrellas, of course. So that was one of the designs that appeared. Let's look at that book, too. So the book looks like this. And I stitched it on a 32 um, Belfast fabric called Platinum. And let's look up what I stitched in Cherry Wine from Sampler Threads. So that was one of the designs in the contest. Another design in the contest, and this was in honor of the rose, which is a symbol for the um, family. And this was a design that was done um, quite a few years ago. This model is stitched over one. Of course, you could stitch it over two. And this is what the booklet looks like. And let's look at the fabric. So I did this on, on, on the over two model. I used Picture This Plus Petal, which is a uh, very, very pale pink, obviously. For the over one model, I used the 28 uh, cashel linen, which is usually what I work on when I do the over ones. So that was the second thing to vote on. And this is the third. And I have to tell you, I couldn't have been more excited when somebody posted on Instagram and I forgot to tag it to my page. They posted a picture of this design. I'm going to set this down. And they had worked it in uh, a beautiful blue. And below the crown, instead of putting to the queen, they had put uh, the, a capital letter E in the font that she uses, um, the Roman numeral two, and a capital letter R, which I actually had to look up um, to research. And that is Regina, which is her middle name. And then below that, they put two dates. And what I'm not sure of is if they put her birth date to her passing date, her death date, or did they put the dates of her reign, which very well could be. But isn't that a fabulous idea? I just loved it. That's why I love seeing what other people do with the designs, because they take them and they make them their own. So this is the model that's stitched over one on a navy blue fabric. Let me double check. That was a 28 Lugana. And then the over two model, which is on the cover here, I stitched on a blue whisper 32 count Belfast linen. So those are the three designs in the contest. All right, now I can move on to topic number two, right? So I pulled out a number of samplers that I didn't show you in my last video. And oh, let's see here. You know what? They're piled here. I'm not going to go in the order that I thought I would because it's going to be easier for me to take them off the pile and then somehow set them someplace. So the first one I wanted to show you, and this has not been charted yet, I call it, and because it hurt, she um, signed the piece, Mary Ann Yunt, Y-U-N-D-T. I believe it is Pennsylvania Dutch, only based on the uh, star that is below here, which is a very typical motif for the Pennsylvania Dutch. The interesting thing about this sampler is that the bottom alphabets are stitched in red and the top alphabets are all stitched in ecru. And those set to say are fading away. But I, um, I have charted this, so perhaps it will come out in another collection in the next year. But I kind of like the, the look of that. I, I always love the different alphabets. She has a wonderful lowercase alphabet right there. So that's one of them. Let me set them aside here. All right, the next in the pile is one that I designed myself. And it was based on a trip that my husband and I took to Prince Edward Island in the provinces of Canada about three or four years ago. It might have been four years ago. And we visited the home of Anne of Green Gables, and I was so enchanted with that house and the grounds. I uh, reread the book again. I hadn't read it since I was a child, and it was just, I just loved it. Now, I don't believe that Anne was a stitcher, and there were no samplers in her house, although there were some needlepoint pieces. I don't know if 
I'm sure they were of the era. I don't know if they're authentic. So when I got home, actually one of the men on our trip said to me, uh, he was so kind, he said, Judy, have you ever designed a sampler for Anne? And I said, no. And so he inspired me. So I just did a, a, a simple sampler. I have her schoolhouse in the forest in her own home and uh, Prince Edward Island on here, and I pretended that she did it. So I wrote Wrought by Anne, 1875. But uh, I've forgotten where I found this frame. It's a gorgeous frame. Actually, it was two frames. So, whoops, my uh, picture is fading away there. So that is one of my own sampler designs, and let me find the book for that. So this is what the booklet looks like. And let's see what, quite a few colors in here. Uh, I used a 32, 32 count Belfast linen. I did not write, it must be an ecru, I did not write on the booklet what it was, but you could choose your own. So that's another sampler from the collection. All right, the next one that's popping up in the pile here is another one that I designed. And of course, if I did a British sampler, I had to do a French sampler. And I call this Alpha Batik. And I just love doing things like this. First of all, pulling all the letters um, from different alphabets with different fonts, finding borders, finding motifs that would fit in with the theme of it. And uh, you can see the Eiffel Tower and a B-skep, the crowns, etc., the hot air balloon. So this booklet, let's see here. So you see I'm surrounded by, by stuff here. This booklet looks like this. All right. I stitched that on an antique white 32 count linen. And I used, as I say, quite a few different um, colors in this piece. Let me see where they are here. Uh, they're on the inside. No, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm thinking, I'm looking at this, but thinking about another piece. My brain is not working today. I'm sorry about that. This was stitched all in one color, a red. I used cherry wine on this one also. So sorry, my little uh, brain kind of shut down right there. All right, the next piece I'm going to show you is quite large. Um, all right, I'm going to try to the light is going to probably hit it a little bit. So I have been posting on Instagram every day a different sampler that either I have created or that is in my collection. And I posted this, I don't know, earlier this week. I'm going to try to show you the whole piece. I think it's one of my very favorite samplers that I've ever purchased. I purchased it quite some time ago from a dealer in the Netherlands. I do believe it is of Dutch origin. Uh, if you could see the edges, they're all very frayed. I don't know if at one time it was cut off of another piece. I'm not sure. But um, I just love the motifs. My favorite one is the blue and white striped urn in the very center. So when I posted this the other day, I'm going to set this down because it is very heavy. Um, I said that it was out of print, and I said I will reprint it if I feel like there is enough interest. Well, I can't tell you how many comments I had about please reprint it. So I'm going to tell you the happy news is that this is what the booklet looks like. Let's see if I can, I'm sorry, I didn't take it out ahead of time. Let's see if I can get it out slowly here. I hope you have stitching and something to work on while I'm jabbering away here. So this is what the booklet looks like. And uh, the chart, of course, is a large one on the inside. There's a photograph of the original sampler. I actually did some small pieces, which I think is very doable. You could do smalls, taking some of the motifs out of this. So it's at the printer right now and it's being reprinted. And I want to show you not only the antique piece, just one second, I have to. Un unpile all of them here, but I want to show you the piece that I stitched. 
So I matched the colors on the back of the piece, which were a little, a little brighter than the ones on the front, of course. But um, as I say, this is probably one of my favorites. It just has so many interesting motifs and beautiful alphabets. So um, I don't know if that's going to go up on my website or I'll let my distributors know. Um, I, will, I will try, I think what I'm going to try to do is uh, have my helper put it uh, back on the website. So stay tuned. I will let you know where it is. So I have two more to show you today in the sampler review and this is another one that has not been released yet but it, to me it has such charm to it it's just alphabets um, I don't know what happened to the poor little girl because she finished the top alphabet she finished the bottom one but she kind of I don't know did she get bored so she stopped at the letter N and uh, sorry about the glare there, um, which I think is, is kind of funny. Who knows what happened, but it's a sweet little piece. I might make it into a marking sampler of some kind. Uh, stay tuned for that. It doesn't have a name or a date on it, um, on the piece. So I have one more to show you, and this is one of my creations, which you've probably seen before if you've been following me a long time. This was done a couple years ago, and uh, this is the one I was thinking of that had all the colors in it. This is called the Chintz Alphabet. And I based this on a collection that I have of Chintz China. And I should have brought a piece over here to show it to you. It's just uh, charming. It looks like cross-stitch. Actually, if you look at the pieces, it, I have cups and saucers. And one dear viewer um, a couple years ago when I designed this actually sent me a platter that was in her collection which I just treasure. So as you can see, it has, um, it's very feminine looking. The alphabet's uh, fonts are all very kind of curly and graceful. And then it uses a lot of uh, flowers and birds and urns, etc., baskets in this piece. And that booklet, that's the last sampler that I'm going to show you today, uh, looks like this. Of course, it could be stitched on any fabric. I did it on a Belfast antique white linen um, with two threads on a 32 count. Although I'm working on a piece right now, I think this is quite interesting. I haven't done this before. I'm working on a design that is on a 32 count, and I'm actually only using one ply of floss, and I think it looks marvelous. So I don't know if you've tried that, but I'm really happy with it. So the only other thing I want to show you in the sampler part portion of this video today is once again, I have two collections, if you're new to my channel, of antique samplers that I have charted that are in my, uh, that I own that I bought a long time ago. And so in each booklet, there are five samplers. In when possible, I try to give the background of the girls who stitch the samplers. In many cases, that's not possible, but I try to give you as much inf information as I can. So this is a collection of antique red samplers. I'll show you that up close again. So there are five in the collection. And then I did an, a second collection. I don't know. I think a third is coming up next year. Um, and this one just came out uh, in March. And this too has five samplers in it, which I've showed you through over the month, past months. And you can see the pictures on the back. And I tried to do charts that are easy to read. So that's the end of my sampler portion. And now we're going into something completely different. I feel like I'm going down another road, right? Another track. So I have quite a few uh, Halloween and fall designs and maybe you've seen them before maybe you haven't maybe you'll get ideas for finishing uh, I as you know I just hope to inspire you and some of the finishes are really sweet I'm trying to get them all within arms reach sorry about that okay so let's move that out of the way so I'm just going to show them to you in no particular order, but the ones that are closest to me. Um, as you know, I have a line of designs called French Country, and I'm not sure actually how I came up with that name. The, as I've told you before, the very first design that 
um, I ever did for French Country was a rabbit. And I just started out using little motifs to form the shape of that um, theme. So I've been doing it for quite a few years. I've kind of um, slowed down a bit because I've, I've covered so many topics already, but I still look back at them and love how they turned out. So the first one I want to show you is the French Country Crow. And I've seen several people work this. Actually, somebody mounted it recently on this wonderful black, oh, it almost looked like a clock. I think they've gotten it at Michael's. And it had a crow at the top of it. It was stunning. So this is my model of the little crow. And this, is, of course, is the French version of his name. I love the finishing on this. My finisher did, did a tiny little pillow with rickrack and little black buttons right here. And it has a little tie at the top. And it's just finished with a fine black corduroy corduroy on the back. But I just love that finish and I think this finish could be adapted to so many other designs that you're working on. You could do it with a Christmas design and use a red rickrack and tiny little buttons or little pearls. I just think it has such possibilities. So another one that I did a while back was called Halloween in the Round. And I did two models of this. This one actually is on its way to a, a show in St. Louis. But this is Halloween in the Round. And this, I found a, a wooden pumpkin. I think I found this one. I found that one at Joann's. And then I have another small wooden pumpkin that I found that I did for the Over One design. And I think I saw this at the store the other day. So they've reissued it again. I'll have to put the number in my notes, but this is the design worked over one. And it's just mounted as a flat with twisted cording around the edges. So that's another fall design. All right, uh, some of the fall designs, actually the models are not here. So I'll show you the books, but um, I don't have the models with me. So here's another one in that same series of a French country, and this is a ghost. And again, I love the finishing that she did. You can always look at the color of the book to get inspiration. But she used a black and white polka dot for the back and the trim along the sides. And then the rickrack and then a tiny, tiny little black and white trim. And then a little button tied in the corner there or attached. And there's a twisted cording around the edges. I just love the way that one turned out. This has worked over one. You could certainly adapt it and do the same idea and work it over two. So here's the French Country Ghost booklet. Let's see if I have another picture on the inside. Yes, I do. All right, and I like the way that turned out too. I've forgotten about this one. I worked it over two in orange and finished it with a rickrack for the trim. So those, and these are pretty fast to stitch because there's not a lot of stitching in them. And then in that same series, I did a black cat. I tried to make him look evil, but I have trouble with doing anything that looks grumpy. So I'm not sure my black cat looks very scary, but this is what he looks like. He's finished with a two color twisted cording on the edge a little black and white polka dot ribbon. You could glue that on, you wouldn't even have to sew it on. And then again, attached with a little, little tiny button with black thread. This one is stitched over one, and then I also stitched it over two. Let's show you that one. Here's the over two design. And my finisher just used a black ribbon with a kind of a white edging. I think I've seen that at Hobby Lobby before and a pom-pom trim for the edges. So this was stitched on a 32 count. The over two was on a 32 count Belfast. The over one was stitched on a 30 count, which actually is from a company that has is no longer in business. But there may be 30 count fabrics out there. You always use 28. 
So I have two more models to show you, where are books to show you where I have the models, and then I have a couple of books to show you just without models. So this was one that I did a long time ago, and it's kind of a fun one. It's The Witch's Hat. Now, the gal, uh, let's see, it was Kelmscott Designs at one time made the blackboard for The Witch's Hat. But I think you could easily do one of the pillow finishes that I showed you here, work it on, um, as I did, on a black fabric with white floss, and I think it would make a darling, tiny little uh, Christmas decoration for a tiered tray, something like that. And let's see, I stitched it on 28 count uh, Zweigart black linen for the over one, and then I did another model of this, and I'll show that to you. This is the over two model. I actually stitched it on black on an orange linen and made it into a little pillow. Let's see what that was. Uh, that was a Belfast linen called just called orange. So that's the little black witch's hat. And you know I love alphabets, of course, of course. This was designed quite a while ago, seven years ago. Uh, this is the Alphabet Owl. And uh, on this book is, all of these designs that I'm showing you, the books are still available. Some of them might even be in the shop on my website. I have to check. But you can also order from your favorite store. So here is the design that I did of that. Over two, it's stitched on a polka dot linen with a pom-pom trim. And then I used all kinds of little brass Halloween charms to decorate it with. And this, this has a little cord like that. And a pretty little ribbons in the upper corner there. And then, I, of course, I also stitched it over one and did the same thing with a little charms on the base. And you could do that with a lot of designs, just add little charms to the base of your finishing. So that completes all the Halloween models that I have uh, on hand. Some of them are out and about. Um, but here are a couple more designs that you could think about. So we're, gosh, I can't believe we're at the end of September. We're getting so, so close to October. It, it is really hard to believe. So here is uh, French Country Witch. And that particular model was stitched over one, but here is the model stitched over two. And again, I love the finishing. She mounted it on. This would be actually easy to mount on one of the wooden boards from Stitch Etc. that they make. Uh, she used a, a striped background. Let's see what the fabric is. All right, so... The antique ivory, it looks like both of them were stitched over two and over one, were stitched on antique ivory 28 cachet linen. So that's one design. This one you've seen already, it's my new Owls in the Round. That came out just a few weeks ago. I also have a French Country Owl. I must have Owls on the Brain. <laughs> Who knows why, right? And then years ago, this was one of my first French Country designs, I did a French country pumpkin. So that's the end of the Halloween parade, and I hope you enjoyed it, and hopefully you're inspired by it. So I want to um, finish up my video today with several things. I have several prizes to award, and I do that by, uh, I figure out the number of people who have commented I check to make sure that you're a subscriber because I very much appreciate those who take the time to subscribe. And, um, and then I use the random number generator to determine three numbers out of that list that will receive a prize. And I don't ask a question for you to answer. I just ask you, um, which design did I show today would you like the booklet of? And so any of the pieces I showed you, you can tell me what you liked. And last time, uh, all three people answered right away. So that was great. So my prizes for this week are for Chris, C-R-I-S. And your last name, Chris, is um, Cerquaria, I think. It's spelled C-E-R-Q. 
Q-U-E-R-I-A. My second winner is Jan. I'm going to spell your last name, Jan. It's M. Meekles, M-I-E-C-H-E-L-S. And the last prize winner is Jean Truckee. So thank you all for watching, of course, and for commenting. I so love reading what you said. And I'm trying to think, somebody else, oh, I know what it was. I'll address it next time. I'm going to write myself a note. Asked me, what was the first design I ever did? And I didn't pull that booklet out today, but I will and show you what I started with years and years ago. You know, I've been doing this a long time. So now I have a quick life update. I want to thank you for all your well wishes. Uh, anybody who watched the last video knows that I had a very strange accident. I was struck by a volleyball, not playing volleyball, but as a spectator, and it hit me right here and I didn't see it coming. Uh, I have to tell you, it has been quite painful. And I, more so than I thought, and it's lasting longer than I thought. But I talked to my primary care doctor and I'm getting a little help for the pain. And so I just, he just said, <clears throat> injuries like that take a while to heal. So thank you for your well wishes on that. It was kind of a funny story. Uh, we have exciting news in our family tomorrow. My niece and her husband and their little baby, so Jessica and Garth and Hudson, are coming from Colorado, from Denver, to visit us for five days. And we have not seen them in a couple years, and we've never met the baby. So I am so excited to have a baby in our house again. Um, I just am I'm so tickled that we're going to see them. And tomorrow is a very special day because my husband is having a very special birthday. And the whole family, plus our relatives from Colorado, are going to be celebrating tomorrow at our daughter's house. So that is just going to be a fun day. Um, next weekend is Needlework Galleria in St. Charles. I will not be there. I'm uh, going to be going, I'm going to be away for a while. So it's probably going to be another month before I do another video. And I, I'm sorry to tell you that, but it's just the way life has gotten very kind of frantic lately. <laughs> and there are too many things on my plate. So unless I get this a little block of time to uh, prepare for it, I probably won't see you until uh, about the third week of October. So I will miss you all. Um, I have an inspirational quote for today, and it has to do with family, of course. And I read this, uh, I'm trying to think, oh, a friend of mine uh, posted it, and I thought it was great. And her quotation was, having days together with your grown children is like visiting with the most treasured and beautiful part of your life. And I will add grandchildren to that phrase, too. I thought that was great. So we're looking forward to being together. I want to thank a couple of people who have been so supportive lately. Um, my Instagram posts, people have been writing wonderful notes. I have, there are several floss tubers who are doing, um, it's called, let's see, the JBW Ornament Cell. And it was supposed to be just for August, but it's been extended now to September. And today I watched Artie with the Vintage Stitcher, and she's going to do it all until Christmas time. So if you're interested in joining and you've been stitching ornaments, please um, post them. We'd love to see how you finish them. Uh, let's see, and who else? Uh, Chrissy with the um, Finally a Farm Girl, she's uh, participating also. So all of you ladies are just doing such a good job, and I'm so grateful for you and the other floss tubers who have been uh, supporting my products and discussing them. So I just have a few more notes to tell you about. My website is jbwdesigns.com, and I do have a shop on that website, and I do have products there. They're probably the older designs. The newer ones, I'm going to encourage you to go to your shop or to an online source to see about ordering those uh, older designs. I'm sorry, the newer designs. Um, my Instagram post is under judy.whitman, W-H-I-T-M-A-N. Um, my email, that's the best way to reach me, is judy at jbwdesigns.com. I do get messages. For some reason, I have a hard time accessing them. So I prefer the email over the messaging system. And please go to my friends page and vote on your favorite 
design that I showed you earlier in this video. So thank you everyone. You are the best viewers. You're so sweet and so thoughtful and so kind. So I will see you in a couple weeks and please take care. Bye-bye.